y'all. I said, what's up, y'all? Look at me when I'm talking to you, bro. Nah, I'm just messing with y'all, man. This your boy, Knockout Boxing 86 TV, and we in here. So check this out, bro. Before we get going on our video, smash the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Share the video. Turn on your notifications, and go follow me on Twitter at KO Boxing 86 TV. If you got a breakdown or a prediction you want me to do, knockoutboxing 86 at yahoo.com is the email address. And don't forget about our live shows. We live every Wednesday and Thursday night, 7.30 p.m. Central Time. You can also catch us live every Sunday morning with the Singing OG KQKC Boxing Network. Sunday mornings, 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. But let's go ahead and get it popping. Let's get into our video. And today, we're bringing y'all another fight prediction, man. We got Dillian White taking on Jermaine Franklin in a 12-round heavyweight fight over in the U.K., White is a minus 1,400 favorite. Franklin is a plus 700 underdog. Franklin's out of Michigan. He's an orthodox fighter. Six foot two, 77 inch reach. 29 years old with 21 victories, no losses, and 14 wins by way of knockout. Then you got Dillian White, who's 35 years old, fighting out of the UK. Six foot four with a 78 inch reach. He's an orthodox fighter as well. 28 wins, three losses with 19 knockouts, and all three of his losses come by way of knockout to Dillian White, Alexander Povek. I mean, I'm sorry to Anthony Joshua, Alexander Povetkin, and um, Tyson Fury. Now, for Joshua and and Povetkin, in the Joshua fight, Dylan White hurt Joshua, had him wobbled, almost stopped Joshua. Joshua stormed back and knocked him out. Then you got um, Povetkin, who knocked Dylan White out in a fight that Dylan White was dominating, but then they ran it back in a rematch, and Dylan White dominated that fight and stopped Povetkin. So, Dylan White, in those times that he's got knocked out, all the fights except Tyson Fury, he, he, he showed up for those fights, and it was highly competitive against world-level, world-class opposition. So um, if we're looking for between these two, the advantage and experience, it's clearly going to go to Dillian White. The bigger name, the A-side, the business of boxing, who, you, who, who the business of boxing is going to want to win in a close fight, is definitely Dillian White. Dillian White, though, has had a bizarre, a bizarre 2022 because... He was very friendly towards Tyson Fury. He didn't even look like he was trying to win that fight against Tyson Fury. He wasn't aggressive. He didn't um, he didn't try to do anything to push the push the pace. He allowed Tyson Fury, who many thought were going to be aggressive in the fight, many people thought that Tyson Fury was going to use the same tactics that he used against uh, Deontay Wilder. Tyson Fury did not do that. He boxed Dillian White from the outside, used lateral movement, walked Dillian White into an uppercut. And put him to sleep, bro. Put him to sleep. Did him dirty, bro. Like, like. And so, Dillian White, this is a big fight for him. This is clearly Eddie Hearn in match room trying to set Dillian White up to have a, another comeback fight, look good against the UK people, get people in his corner behind him again before maybe um, setting up a rematch with somebody like Anthony Joshua, um, maybe allowing... Um, one of their up and coming um, prospects to to fight Dillian White, maybe try to get a name out. Like he's definitely trying to be built up. He's the one that they would like to win because Jermaine Forrest, I mean Jermaine Franklin, is not. Um, he he's coming over there to be an opponent. As far as how they fight, um, Dillian White has far better experience of the two. Has fought the far better names. You got Joseph Parker on his resume. Anthony Joshua, as we said, Tyson Fury, Povetkin on there twice. Dillian White. Um, definitely has a better um, experience, um, big left hooks, uh, really good power. Um, the only thing about Dillian White has always been his balance, bro. His balance and his stance. He's unable to get it out of the way of stuff. The man looks like he's slew-footed, knock-kneed, and pigeon-toed, and bow-legged all at the same time, bro. His stance in the ring is horrible. Every time he get hit, it looks like he got hurt. His balance is that bad, you know what I mean? So he is working with Buddy McGirt. A lot of people are mad at Buddy McGirt right now because Buddy McGirt said that he never seen any footage of Jermaine Franklin, that he doesn't look at footage of other fighters um, training his guys because he believes that if you train for one thing, um, it can make you um, kind of one-dimensional. So let's say they said Jermaine Franklin had a big right hand. But Jermaine Franklin come out and don't try to set up his big right hand, don't throw it, don't nothing. Well, you done spent the whole training camp getting ready for his big right hand, and then he don't even try to use it. Now you, now you kind of, now you confused. You don't know what to do. So Buddy McGirt made it clear that he much rather just train his guys to be sharp, be the best version of themselves that they can be. 
and uh, people took criticism for that. They, people, some people believe like as a fighter, they understand that that you wouldn't do that. But as a trainer, like you want to look at the opponent um, that your fighter is, is fighting. Um, for me, my my take on it is Buddy McGirt is tried and true. <laughs> He's one of the better trainers in, in in boxing. He's tried and true. When you hear the instructions in the corner, you can tell that he he telling them the right shit. He telling them the right things to do, so he see what he need to see when they in there fighting and. His fighters come in sharp and prepared, and he's gotten a lot of guys better. So I, I would just say it works for him. It works for him. I'm not a trainer, but if I was training, yeah, the the way that I break shit down and the way I like to look at shit, yeah, I'd be watching film on my guys' opponents, trying to find their weaknesses, trying to give my guys things he can do to exploit it. But that's why Buddy McGirt is Buddy McGirt, and I'm knockout boxing. Maybe he can see that shit in one round. Maybe he can just watch them fight and be like, oh, yeah, yeah, this is what we need to do after a few minutes of watching them fight in the first round. Maybe that's how he get down and he want to spend his camp focusing on his fighters' weaknesses and strengths and just making them a better fighter to each his own. So who am I to question Buddy McGurk? It's my thoughts on it. But um, for him, being in Dillian White's corner, I think he's going to definitely have him sharp, have him ready to go. I saw the way in. Dillian White of the two looks like he's in much better shape. Um, so so expect him to um, expect him to do well. In that fight now, um, Jermaine Franklin he got pretty fast hands. Um, as I said, he hasn't fought near the competition that, that Dillian White has, has had. You see a, a, a undefeated fighter, but I'm looking at him struggle against a guy like Jerry Forrest who was well past his prime. A guy I believe Dillian White starches. I just Jermaine Franklin while he has fast hands, while he looks like he does some things well in the ring, he he can move pretty well for a heavyweight. Um, good power against the guys that he has fought. It's just, at 29 years old, something missed. He's been very inactive lately. He's only fought five rounds since 2019. He's had one fight since 2019, and that fight was five rounds. I just, I don't know if he's ready for someone the level of Dillian White. And then they're fighting over in Dillian White's hometown, but they're fighting in the U.K. So looking at the fight, you got to ask yourself, is Jermaine Franklin, not only is he better than Dillian White, can he beat Dillian White? Can he beat Dillian White, and is he that much better than him to where he's going to just be able to be mentally strong enough and be tough enough and be so much better than Dillian White where he's just doing dirty in his own home country, bro? I like I don't know that about Jermaine Franklin. If Jermaine Franklin go in there and show me that, then cool. But I think Dillian White being the taller of the two, looking like, like if you go watch the weigh-ins, it's up on YouTube right now for you to look at. Um, All you do is type in Dillian White versus Jerry Forrest. You can look. You can go watch the weigh-ins. Dillian White looked like he in much better shape than uh, I keep saying Jerry for Forrest. Then Jermaine Franklin, he looked like he in much better shape. I think he has a much more proven world level um, experience. And when you're stepping up to world level for the first time, unless it's a special talent, unless it's you know Jerron Boutin is stepping to world level, Gary Antoine Russell, um, Virgil Ortiz Jr., Jesse Bam Rodriguez. Um, guys like that stepping up to world level for the first time, Raymond Ford, that those levels of talents, Shakur Stevenson when he stepped like those levels of talents, bro. It's one thing to be like, yeah, I got them beaten and got it. I already got the world level experience and it's a pretty good fighter. But somebody like Jermaine Franklin who has already been struggling up to this point, who some can say he lost to Jerry Forrest, a guy who hasn't been that impressive. Someone who's not relatively hard to hit, and then I look at you not come in the best shape of your life. Like, I've seen him look in much better shape in other fights. You pick the biggest moment of your career, in my opinion, to not be in the best shape. I don't know, bro. I got Dillian White in this fight, and I think Dillian White could stop Jermaine Franklin. I think he can stop Jermaine Franklin because if he gets him hurt, gets him wobbled, Dillian White got the type of power that he can separate you from your senses, but also if he get him hurt and Jermaine Franklin not throwing back, Ref going gonna to try to get the stoppage for him and because this is what this is about, bro. This is about trying to make Dillian White look good. I think he will look good in this fight. I think Jermaine Franklin may have moments, but um, he's going to be pushed on his back foot. And if you allow Dillian White to be the aggressive fighter, if Dillian White is able to come forward, yeah, yeah, he can, he can do damage to you. Jermaine Franklin might walk him into a shot here or there, but he ain't Tyson Fury. He ain't Tyson Fury. He ain't Anthony Joshua. I don't even think he Pavekin. Like I don't, I don't even think he that. Pavekin's a bigger puncher. Got way more pedigree as a former Olympian. Um, and is is proven at the world level. Whereas Jermaine Franklin, he's coming to the world level. So I'm going with the guy that got the better experience. We got Dillian White winning this fight. I'm gonna say he stopped Jermaine Franklin. 
somewhere between round seven and round nine. Although I, I'd be remiss if I didn't say I wouldn't be surprised if Dillian White lost the fight. Dillian White is a guy that has shown multiple times he can get hurt. He is a guy that, you know, you just don't know what to expect with him. And because Jermaine Franklin does have better balance than him. He does have better he does have his feet up under him better than Dillian White. Um, so Jermaine Franklin might can can do something with Dillian White, but he would have to show me because I've never seen him fight on this level. Dillian White is in his home. It's in his home country. He's the A side. He's the one that's gonna have all the fans behind him. Plus, I think he's just good enough to beat Jermaine Franklin anyway. Um, so I'm gonna go with Dillian White in this fight again. Stop it somewhere between round seven and round nine. Um, I think Dillian White is gonna is gonna show up and show out, man. That's what I think. So y'all, let me know what y'all think. Comment down below. Smash the like. Subscribe to the channel. Share the video, turn on your notifications, and go follow me on Twitter at KO Boxing 86 TV. Appreciate y'all watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. And with that, we out of here. Peace out, y'all.